Good morning, good morning, my beauties. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my weekly live stream that I do here every single Sunday at 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, let me just make sure I have everything muted that I need muted. And then we can hit the show on the road. Um, for those of you that are new around here, this is my weekly live stream where I sit down and talk with you guys about all the new beauty releases. So you guys can join me live if you're ever available and you can sound off in the live stream comments what you think of everything as we go through. You can tell me your thoughts, your opinions, everything like that. If you are watching the replay, by all means, you are more than welcome to share your opinions down in the comments box and let me know your thoughts on all these products that we're going to be talking about as we go through today. So I will do my little disclaimer here as per usual because I do get told sometimes that I can be quite negative, but I am negative for a reason. I am very highly critical of everything new that's coming out. I'm trying to save money. I'm trying to reduce my beauty collection as well as most of my community are trying to save money, use what they already have. And we all have quite large collections. So we are very critical of what's coming out. We know what we like, we know what we don't like. So that's why we all have opinions. Um, everyone here is welcome to share their opinion. This is a safe space. I will respect your opinion. You respect mine and we'll all live happily ever after. So yes, um, without further ado, I will share my screen as per usual. Um, I will let you know. I follow a couple of accounts on Instagram. So I follow Kat and Haley from Beauty News. Their um, Instagram handle is Beauty News Official. I also follow Trend Mood as well as Indie Makeup Spotlight, which is run by Amy Loves Makeup. So those are the three main accounts I follow to keep up to date with new beauty releases and um yeah, I think that's about everything. That's all the housekeeping that I need to share for today. Um, I have a couple of people that have joined me. We have Eden, good morning, and Stevie as well has joined. Good morning to both of you. It is so good to see you both this morning. Let me go on and share my screen. Okay, so in a minute, you should have my other screen pop up for you. Just let me, I am like running on fumes today. I was up at 2 a.m. this morning um, to do a masterclass with Vanessa Davis from the Wigs and Makeup Manager. It was really good, but I am pooped because it was 2 a.m. Um, Australian time. So I had to get up at like the crack of dawn it wasn't I was up before the sun was up so I got up for like two and a half hours and then I crawled back into bed and then my second alarm went off to come and join you guys today so I am running on fumes today um Kylie has joined as well good morning lovely um and Stevie says sorry I missed last week that is all fine all fine we can catch up okay beauty news if I can spell um, Kylie says masterclass sounds interesting. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, Vanessa Davis, I don't know whether I think all her current masterclasses are sold out. Um, but she is the lady on Instagram that does like a lot of the skull makeup, like really amazing, beautiful designs. She does a lot of like the jeweled skulls and whatnot. So I did her, um, masterclass. It was just via a zoom call and she went through like her techniques and like what, different products she uses and how she uses them. So it was really interesting for me to um, to to do, definitely. And it was only, I think it worked out to be, uh, I think it may have been, I think it may have been like 70 or maybe 50 Australian dollars. I can't quite remember what the exchange rate worked out to be because she's in the UK. So it was exchange rate for um, us. I've been awake since 4 a.m. to watch the SpaceX rocket launch. <laughs> Actually, one of my friends um, sent me an email, um, sent an email um, about that <laughs> to remind me, but I was, yeah, I was back in bed by that time. Um, Carolyn has joined as well. Good morning to you too, beautiful. Okay. I feel like this week, I when I was scrolling through this morning at the crack of dawn to do my um 
to do my thumbnail, I was a little bit underwhelmed. I didn't really see anything that really interested me. And I know that um, June is Pride Month. And I'm, to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed in a lot of the Pride collections that are coming out this year. I feel like, I don't know, everyone kind of forgotten about it. But it, that's really disappointing, like really disappointing for me because I always like seeing the rainbow collections every year. And this year, I feel like everyone's just kind of like, just kind of like whatever about it. Um, so the first one here is the new Pride collection from NYX Cosmetics. And they say new, but it's not actually new. So this palette has been out for quite a while. All they've done is made a rainbow cardboard box and put the palette in there and called it a Pride collection. I'm extremely disappointed in um, this palette <laughs> and they say that these are um, pride edition vivid bright eyeliners i'm almost certain that these are already part of their range i don't think they're anything new particularly for pride month um and then we have pride edition shout loud satin lipsticks um so that's these ones here as well i can't really comment on the lipsticks or the liners but i do know for certain that the eyeshadow palette is already an existing one and they've just put it in a box in terms of the eyeliners and the lipsticks i'm only speculating um just because <laughs> of how lazy they've been with the the eyeshadow palette i can only assume that they've been super lazy with the other products as well so um on a whole i'm really disappointed in this collection like really disappointed it doesn't say whether um they're donating any money to any um causes um so i can't comment on that either normally cat and Haley are really good at putting that information in here so generally if they're not if it's not in here i would imagine that they're probably not donating money um but you guys can by all means correct me if i'm wrong yeah i'm not going to be picking anything up i i don't like supporting this kind of lazy collaboration stuff like they're just slapping the the pride um stuff on it just to try and make it look like they're inclusive and you know thinking about them but in reality like they haven't really gone to much effort and yeah i i don't really like supporting that kind of stuff like when people don't actually put the effort in with um uh stuff like this then i i really i just can't support it i can't support it um <clears throat> uh kylie says good if we don't have too much temptation boo nix uh pride launches are feeling like they have turned into a cash grab for the brands i agree um i definitely agree um, that was one of the big conversations about the Elf and J Kisser palette, um, because it is a rainbow palette and because they've launched it so close to Pride Month that they're trying to kind of cash in on that Pride aspect of it, even though the, the like proceeds of it go to a animal shelter. And then there's also the added fact, which we didn't talk about last week because I didn't really know about it. But apparently ELF has created like a hashtag and if you post photos and use that hashtag, they will donate $1 for every photo posted to that hashtag. I think a minimum of $25,000 or up to $25,000. I can't quite remember exactly what the dollar amount was, but it was $25,000. Let me see if there is any information because once again, this is a little bit disappointing as well because... It's very like free publicity, like people are donating all this. Yeah, so for every submission under the eyes, lip, face, paws, Elf will donate a dollar to Angel City Pits, which is Jay Kiss's chosen foundation. So they're not donating proceeds or any profits from the sale of the palette. You actually have to, you know, give them marketing and they will donate a dollar for <laughs> You were free marketing, essentially, um, when normally marketing campaigns can be quite expensive if people actually put the money into it. So I don't know. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Like the whole them donating a dollar for every photo posted under the hashtag. Um, I do really like this elf collection for the price 
though in Australia it's still a decent price. Yeah, everything elf related in Australia still works out to be pretty expensive. Everyone's always like, elf is such an affordable brand. And then you're like, hang on a minute. It's not really <laughs> because when you convert it in Australian dollars, it's it's pretty up there in price. Like it's still cheaper than a lot of brands and especially a lot of our drugstore brands, but it's still pretty expensive. All righty. Next, we have a new collection from By Terry. This is their summer 2020 collection. And I don't know whether this is uh, like a re, what's the word? Like them just re-promoting something already existing. But I swear that this palette has already been out. So I don't know whether this is in a different colorway or if it is a different, I don't know, because I swear they've already had these CC. Oh, this is a CC brush, illuminate blush, brush blush <laughs> cc brightening blush illuminating palette whereas i think the other one that just came out just recently was more like a setting face setting powder kind of dealio very similar to the hourglass illuminating powders whereas this is like blushes so we have blushes we also have some ombre black star cream shadows in three new colors then we have the wait I'm very confused. No, this is the CC blush. <laughs> this is the CC brightening palette in Sunny Flash. And this is the Balm de Rose. Forget everything I just said. <laughs> the CC blush is this one here in the little pump bottle. This one here is the CC brightening palette in Summer Flash. So same thing that they had before, just in like a different color color way but it does look like you could you could definitely have these as blushes and maybe a bronzer and a highlighter in there then we have the the blush the balm de rose which is way too expensive for a lip balm i think this this balm de rose in australian dollars is like 70 60 or 70 dollars for a lip balm which is just way too much money uh the blusher actually looks like it might be quite nice don't have any swatches unfortunately but Looks like it might be quite nice. And I do like this pump bottle aspect of um, this pump bottle aspect of the, the blusher. Um, Carolyn says, I've seen it on the Mecca website in the new section. Hmm. Let's have a look. I know they had one of the palettes out just recently and... I think it was different to this one. And I will say these Ombre Black Stars, they're hella expensive. Like these in Australian dollars, I think they're like $50 each. Very expensive, but they are really nice. I have, I think, two of them. Um, like I can't believe I paid that much money for like a pen eyeshadow. But I did. I did back in the day, you know, when I was buying everything that all the UK – um, influences recommended and everyone loved <laughs> the by Terry ombre black stars we've all been there we've all purchased everything that you know at least one or two of those UK influences was recommending at one point um, so I definitely fell into the trap of buying the by Terry's but they are really nice they're a really nice formula they blend really nicely they're like one of those good slap and dash kind of products I lie they're $63 that's that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for an eyeshadow stick. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Lordy. Uh, so this palette on uh, Mecca is uh, $96. That's a lot of money. <laughs> That's a lot of money for four powders. Oh, my gosh. Uh, do they have this new – I don't think they have these products, but they do have the, they do have the original brightening CC palette. Okay, let me have a look at it. Actually, is it the same thing? It looks – is it the same? Okay, they do have this. They have this exact one on the Mecca website, and it's $96. I thought that – okay, I must be going crazy. <laughs> they do have that. Do they have the rest of the stuff? Let me look. Go back. Um, that's a lot of money for four, for four, for, um, powders. 
a lot of money. I've seen a few reviews on it and it's definitely like a very illuminating palette. Uh, I don't think I would like it. <laughs> I want to know about these blushes, whether they have these blushes. By Terry in general is very expensive. Like I think that they are a bit overpriced for what you get. It's very expensive. It's it's all in the name, isn't it, with By Terry? Anyway, um, I'll have a mini Black Star eyeshadow that came in a set last Christmas. Yeah, if you can get them in the minis, they're really good. But for a full price, it's expensive. Uh, way out of my price range, but we paid it for Hourglass palettes. I'd rather spend on Hourglass being cruelty-free. Actually, you make a good point, Carolyn. Um, I, I will say that uh, By Terry is not, like, cruelty-free. She doesn't, like, you know. <sighs> I just don't know why you wouldn't. Um, in this day and age, I just can't understand why brands wouldn't be cruelty-free. Um, Stevie says, wasn't the Becca one only around $60? I don't have any, but thought I seen it. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. The Becca ones were a little bit cheaper. By Terry, it just has like those really prestige um, price tags, which, yeah, you know. Next, we have some more products from Kimchi Beauty. Uh, Kimchi Chic Beauty. Um, I don't like the name of this brand. <laughs> the Kimchi Chic, I just think, you just, you know, just condense it down a little bit more. Just Kimchi Beauty would have been fine. But they have released some more products in their concealer range, and these are their color correctors. And I want to commend this brand because they have every single color that you could possibly think of as a color corrector. So if you need, like, a unique color to correct something, uh, I would definitely look at these because... There's not many brands that have color correctors in all these shades and in these in intensities. So once again, this is the same formula as their concealer. It's supposed to be buildable, full coverage, feels lightweight, blends seamlessly into the skin and is water resistant. And as you can see there, there's a huge range of colors in the color correctors. So if you need color correctors, Maybe check these out. I think these are already available on the Glamorator website. I think they are coming in and out of stock quite a lot just because of popularity and because Glamorator is like the only Australian stockist of Kimchi Beauty. But if you do want to try anything from this particular brand, then check out Glamorator. I think it's a really... Yeah, I think it's a, a really, really cool um, spread of colors. There's not many brands that when you see them come out with correctors, they come out with this many colors. Normally, it's just like the, the lavender, the green, and maybe like a, a salmon type color, whereas these have a lot more. And it's good because it is like a drag queen type brand. Um, they're coming out with more colors to be able to cover like – uh, bead shadow, uh, eyebrow, like really deep eyebrow colors, different things like that. So I think that they are doing a good job when it comes to shade ranges and um, like diversity and covering everything in their collection. <laughs> Speaking of lazy launches, <laughs> Glam Glow are at it again. I feel like Glam Glow definitely need to go back to the drawing board and come up with something new because <laughs> throwing a new celebrity or, you know, intellectual property uh, brand trademark or something on their pot is not exciting. So we have the clearing mud with Barbie on the lid and we also have the Glam Glow Glow Starter Mega Illuminating Moisturizer also with Barbie on the lid. So, yeah. I don't think that I will get any of this. One, because I don't really like the Glam Glow products all that much. I think they are way overpriced. And, sorry, I'm getting a little bit animated. My screen's like <laughs> bobbing around. Um, yeah, I just think that, their products are way overpriced for what you get. 
and I don't think that it's really worth it. They are launching on Mecca Cosmetica tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, if you want it, you can get it. If you like Barbie, if you're obsessed with Barbie, I don't know. I think this cap, like, as a collaborative effort, this cap is a little bit boring. Like, it, it's just a bit, I don't know. I just feel like it's a little bit lazy. It's cool that it comes in, like, a bright pink bottle. But I don't know. I think that they could have potentially have done more than just a cap. Alrighty. Next we have a new collection from Fenty and this is the Slip Shine Sheer Shiny <laughs> Lipstick. <laughs> what a name, what a name. Um, <laughs> So this says some, slip into something a little more comfortable with slip shine sheer shiny lipstick. Um, like your favorite pair of jeans, slip shine is the everyday staple you can't live without. So it's supposed to be ultra comfortable. It's supposed to be perfect for day or play and low key sexy without even trying. Oh gosh. Uh, so it's clinically proven to lock in moisture. It's lightweight. It's supposed to be nourishing, infused with hydrating pomegranate oil. Um, instantly condition your pout with lip smoothing comfort in just one swipe. Okay. This is a lot. <laughs> the name is absurd. Um, what else do they have to say about this lipstick? You know, they just really um into the slipping into something slip shine she slip shiny slip <laughs> lipstick um so we've got 10 easy to wear lip shades uh best of the best news to unexpected shimmery pops so she lipstick is your go-to for when you want to look good without doing the most, uh, swipe it on and go, no mirror, no problem, shiny, buildable, creamy texture. Um, you want to apply again and again. Slip Shine instantly delivers pouty, fuller looking lips. Your boo can't help but kiss. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> this whole description is a lot. I'm sorry, but if you need two paragraphs to describe your product, maybe just tone it down a little bit. Just, you know, just rate it in a little bit. Um, I don't think we need two paragraphs <laughs> to explain a product um shiny 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 shine <laughs> that name is ridiculous um i can see it being all over my coffee cup on the first sip i am a notorious lipstick all over my teeth and coffee cup person um <laughs> my co-workers are forever like you just got a little something something and i'm like oh it's all right it's just lipstick <laughs> and forever all over my cups um and all over your teeth yeah i'm yeah, I don't need any more reason to get lipstick on my cups and my teeth than having a slip shine, she shiny lipstick. Um, they will probably look quite nice, but they won't last. They look pretty. Oh, and I had that yesterday with a new lipstick I tried. How embarrassing. <laughs> I always, like I just said, I always have lipstick on my teeth. I'm a notorious lipstick teeth wearer. Um, the colours... I must say that it does say they're sheer, but I'm a little bit underwhelmed by them. Um, there's not really any in there that really interests me. Uh, yeah, I'm not interested. Not interested at all. I know the last lot of lipsticks there, like matte lipsticks, didn't really get a good wrap. Uh, these are going to be $22 US dollars, so probably around about $50 Australian dollars each. Yeah, the colors don't really do it for me. Don't really do it for me at all. The description doesn't really do it for me. Yeah, I'm not sold. Not sold. I will say I do like this really sleek white packaging from Fenty. It will probably get really dirty for me, but it's nice, but I'm not going to buy any of these. If I'm going to buy some lipsticks, it's definitely not going to be from Fenty. <laughs> Next, we have a new collection from Kaleidos Makeup. 
You guys know I love Kaleidos makeup. I have the majority of their range and I am I'm a massive fan of their stuff. But this is the new Escape Pod collection. Um, so we have the Escape Pod eyeshadow palette. That's this guy right here. Then we have the close up. We have two blush duos here. We have three new highlighters and a lucid lip lip gloss, a tone activator eye primer, and two sponges. So we shall break this down. So the makeup sponges, I can take it or leave it. I don't, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to try these. The eye primer, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. Um, I think it's a really, like, 12 mil tube is a really decent size. But I've heard, like, you know, kind of mixed things about it. So I would like to give this a try for myself, but I do have like enough eyeshadow primer at the moment. But if I was purchasing from them and I needed to, I don't know, get over the free shipping limit or anything like that, I might potentially pick this one up. The Lucid Lips, I really like their Lucid Lip lip gloss formula. Um, I think that they're really nice. I do prefer the, what are they called? Um, the other one, the the liquid lip formula. Their liquid lip formula is really nice. It's more that kind of like blotted um, matte kind of lip. And the lip glosses are really nice, I will say though, but I prefer the liquid lip formula. And the highlighters, I think we have like a red one, a bluey toned one, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure because I do remember that they said that they were relaunching or reformulating one of them. And I'm not sure if that's this one or whether it's a different one. I can't quite remember. Their highlighters are really nice. Their highlighters are really nice. Mind you, extremely delicate. Don't drop those guys because if you drop them, they will shatter everywhere. I dropped like the entire um, like container that I was storing all my Kaleidos makeup highlighters in on my like wooden floorboards. And I opened them up and they were like smashed to smithereens. Like it was a heartbreaking day. These blush duos, um, I don't, I, I don't like hate these colors. I wouldn't go out of my way to buy them. But if I had them, I would definitely give them a good try, a good red hot go. But I will say, um, I'm not quite sure what the formula is like on these. But if it's, if like the Kaleidos formula is anything to go by, I would assume that these would be good. But I can't really say for sure whether I would like these. But I do like majority of Kaleidos um, products and formula. The eyeshadow palette, like, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I definitely think I could get some really nice um, eyeshadow looks out of this eyeshadow palette. But I could kind of take it or leave it, especially because she is bulky. She's thick. She's got some some girth to her. She, she is um, chunky. She's a chunky girl. Um, yeah, and this kind of, like, raised thing. Like, I get the whole aesthetic that they're going for and I get why it is the way it is, but it's just a little bit too much for my liking. So, once again, the eyeshadow palette, I could take or leave. I like their formula. If I had it, I wouldn't hate it. But, well, I wouldn't hate having it in my collection. If I don't have it, like, I'm not probably going to go out of my way and buy it. But it's a nice one. Actually, do they have any? Let me see if we have any swatches. Kaleidos has been really kind of quiet on this collection. Uh, I, I know they sent out a lot of their, um, what was I going to say? They sent out a lot of their PR packages and kind of let their, you know, the people on their PR list kind of promote this and announce this for them. Because I saw videos on uh, videos on YouTube about this collection before I even saw it on um, any of their social media website or anything like that. Um, I've been tempted to buy the. Oh, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Um, I've been tempted to buy the blue one. Everyone raved about from Fenty, but can't make a decision. Um, no, from Wayne Goss. 
Mel Thompson did a review. I'm yet to watch it, but popped it up in my feed last night. Um, have you got your lipsticks from Wayne Goss yet, Carolyn? I don't know whether you said that they arrived yet. Um, I brought a few of the Wayne Goss lip bits. I was so sad when they arrived. Three of the five were damaged. They looked like manufacturing issues too. Not damaged in shipping. I got a refund, but very sad. Oh, that's really disappointing. That's really disappointing. Um, oh, no, I'm still waiting for my order to arrive. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> that's really disappointing, though, that you spent that much money and they arrived damaged. That's disappointing. We have some new products from Bourgeois. These are the Rouge Velvet Ink lip products. Um, these are supposed to be an intense, long-lasting matte lip ink that doesn't transfer, has a precise applicator that allows you to line your lips before filling. Interesting. Let's watch this little video. I want to see this applicator. Oh, I don't Okay, that color looks beautiful. <laughs> I will say that color looks stunning. Um, I don't know how I feel about this, like, you know, precision. Uh, this precision applicator, but the colors look nice, especially these deeper ones. The deeper ones look really nice. I don't know whether this is available in 18 shades. It's now available on the Bourgeois, the France Bourgeois website, and hopefully coming soon elsewhere. So we might see these at um, we might see these at Priceline, maybe at some point in the future, but I don't know. Maybe. Bourgeois typically for me, like They've always had fairly decent um, lip products. So I wouldn't be against trying these, but I definitely don't need any more liquid lipsticks. Um, Kylie says, nice red, but still not really precision enough for me. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I don't know how I feel about their claim that it's a precise applicator. And yeah. I can get behind this brush right here. <laughs> this brush is gorgeous, uh, but it is the Flat Top Kabuki Foundation Brush from uh, Sigma, the F80. So this is for their Pride um, collection. So it's a limited edition iridescent finish brush. Will be available from the 1st of June, so tomorrow, for 25 US dollars, and 50% of the proceeds will go to the It Gets Better project. Um, to support LGBTQ plus youth. So I think that this is a really nice, um, like I think it's a really nice way to like not create something completely new for like a, a collection. So um, Sigma have obviously wanted to support the Pride campaign, which I think is a really good movement, but instead of like trying to create something um completely new they've taken like a product that they already have and made it into like a new packaging and instead of just doing like a a box like a colorful box to put this brush in they have actually made the actual brush handle and ferrule colorful so i think that this is a good way to um like do something without like doing a whole dedicated collection i think this is a really good way to support a cause or like um what's the word, like a campaign or do a collaboration in a good way. Like I think it's a good way to do a collaboration. Like take something what you've that you've already got existing or that um, is really popular and make it in a way that supports that collaboration. Um, nice handle, but I don't use flat top kabukis. I'm the same. So I would have liked to have seen like maybe a couple of brushes from Sigma or maybe like a little brush set um, from Sigma um, and then maybe those ones be sold individually for um, Pride. But obviously, I don't know, like maybe if they did a few eye brushes with the same um, feral design because this, this design is stunning. <laughs> I would like some brushes in this design. I think it's beautiful. But uh, I don't really use the flat top kabukis. 
Um, I do enjoy that brush when I use it with my Ecosmetic CC cream. I know, I know that brush has like a cold following. I know there's a lot of people that use it, but I just personally don't, I don't use it anymore. Okay. Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, is coming for my wallet. <laughs> they have launched a set of their mini dewy setting sprays. So they are, okay, so these are sold separately or available in the set. So I would probably like to have these individually because I want the pineapple one and I want the mango one, but I can leave the original one. <laughs> I am a setting spray fiend. I have this little goblin inside me that when I see a new setting spray, they get a little bit excited and they take over and they just want to buy everything. So uh, the little setting spray goblin inside me right now is <laughs> getting very excited trying to take over and steal my credit card <laughs> because uh, yeah I love setting sprays the pineapple one and the mango one on my list they're $15 each though so um these are going to be expensive but I will say the the minis of the mac ones were really expensive too so in Australian dollars I think they were like 30 I think they were more expensive than the original full size ones. I can't quite remember how much they were, but I think they were close to $30 and they were just in the small one. Um, and these are just the small ones. So they'll probably be about $30 as well. Um, I never tried these setting sprays. I used Gerard Cosmetics. I've never tried the Gerard Cosmetics ones, actually. I've never tried these ones either. I will say that. I've never tried these ones, but just because the, the scent, <laughs> the scent is what gets me. Um, I, I would like to try these. Um, I can pass on those. I don't want dewy. I do love setting sprays though. Yeah, I think you're either a setting spray person or you're not a setting spray person. Uh, Mini Max Fix Plus were ridiculous. Yeah, they were super expensive. I like, I wanted to buy all of them, but I didn't because they were just too expensive for what you were getting. Um, Gerard are good for setting all day, but a lot of alcohol. Okay. Okay. It's always worked for me. So I just keep using the slay all day. Yeah. I know. Um, is it Nakia? Nakia Joy. She's always sworn by the slay all day. Alrighty. Face Halo have come out with a limited edition pride, um, set of their face halos. Um, they're only donating 5%. So I'm a little bit, I don't know, I mean, it's I guess it's better than nothing, but 5% of the proceeds are going to the Trevor Project. Um, uh, with the total donation amount being varied at the moment at, is, as it is based off net sales of the total campaign. Right, okay. So they haven't really specified how much they're willing to donate or anything like that. Um, five percent is not much at all, though. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Five percent is woeful, <laughs> oh, woeful. Um, uh, where are, I'm missing everyone's. <laughs> um, I have the Rose Dry Cosmetics because recommended by Nakia. Yes, Nakia did a collaboration. I love the rose scent. Um, I have her rose scent and the coconut one that Rose and Ben uses. Uh, Boo Face Halo, expect more from them redonations, especially when donations are a tax deduction. So 5%, I just think, is absolutely woeful. I mean, it's better than nothing. It's better than zero. But I think if you are going to try and, like, campaign and profit off something, you need to be donating more than 5%. Or at least set a minimum. Like I know a lot of brands are saying we will donate so much. Um, and these guys, I can see like they're getting bashed in the comments, like a whole 5% of their profit, um, increasing the price um, and aren't even donating the difference. Like a whole $1.75. Uh, this is the definition of rainbow capitalism. Um 
a lot of people are like tearing them to shreds about only giving 5%. Um, and it looks like, ooh. So these must normally be $30 and for this it's $35. That's what people are saying in the comments that they've increased the price and they're still only donating 5%. I don't know. Maybe it's a typo. Maybe, I don't know. Hopefully it's a typo, but Lord. Um, yeah, I just think if you were going to capitalize on something like pride um, and you're only donating 5%, I don't think that's good enough, <laughs> especially because it's a tax deduction. Um, like if you're only going to be donating 5%, I just don't think you should even bother, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, BH Cosmetics have launched their latest collection, and this is the Weekend Vibes. So we have the Avocado Toast Shadow Palette. We have the Mimosa Shadow Palette, the Bellini Blush Palette, the Belgium Waffle something, <laughs> Bronzer Palette, I'm assuming, the So Extra High Shine Plumping Lip Gloss Duo, and the Brunch 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 Bunch 11-piece brush set. That was a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, okay. I will say the swatches do not do this palette any favors, especially this one. Like these ones down here are a hot mess. Who decided to take these photos? Because um, not helping the brand, I don't think. Um, it's definitely turning me off when I see all these colors smudged together. This one here looks really nice, I will say. Uh, I don't use any of these colors, though. Some of these look like they might have been swatched wet. Hmm. Hmm. And then we have the So, so Extra High Shine Plumping Lip Gloss Duo. So the, there's two different duos. And then we have a blush palette and a bronzer highlighter palette. I don't know what exactly it is. And then we have the brush set. I've heard pretty good things about the um, the brushes from BH Cosmetics. So if you are looking for brushes at a reasonable price in a set, maybe check out the BH Cosmetics ones if you like this color story, like this kind of peachy toned color story. And then the blush palette looks all right. It would just depend on the formula, whether it's like super... Uh, powdery or anything like that. Same with this highlighter palette, highlighter bronzer palette. Um, <laughs> whether it's how it looks on the skin. I'd like to see some swatches of both of these, but I can't seem to find any. Um, there's none on this little photo here. And then the, the lip glosses, I can leave them. I don't need any lip glosses at the moment. And the eyeshadow palettes, I don't wear pinks. And then the swatches of this palette really turned me off. And it's like the, that deeper grungy um, type eyeshadow palette as well. So ones that I typically don't really wear a lot of, what I've got in my collection like is enough for me. Um, what are you guys saying? I paid between $39.95 for my face halo. Okay. Uh, I just seen these this morning and the avocado one looks jumbled. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a, a bit like smashed avocado. <laughs> Next we have by Terry. Uh, this is the T to 10 face and body instant bronzer spray. So this is a tea infused liquid bronzer, face and body, two, two tanning effects, so matte or shimmer. What? How can you have two tanning effects? No tanning agent, long-lasting skin care infused water formula. Tea to what? Tea to tan face and body set. Tea to tan face and body instant bronzer spray. What do you get in the set? Oh, okay. Okay, I'm very confused. <laughs> My brain. <laughs> um, what do they say? Golden glow all year round with the innovative T to tan hydra bronzer creates a warm tan finish. 
sheen or matte depending on whether you shake the water-based formula. Right. Okay. Infused with tea extracts and active fruit essence that protect the skin from aging. Universal iced tea shade suits all skin tones. No streaking. <laughs> so if you want to look like you have sat in a bath filled with tea all day long, <laughs> you come looking out like iced tea, you can get this. Um, so... I figured out the set. So the set is one of each. So you get both the 100 mil and the 30 mil in the set. It's a weird kind of set, but that's what they're calling a set. I find this really weird. Like this whole, you can get a more matte or sheen finish depending on how much you shake it up. I don't know about that, especially if you're not shaking it. Like if it has a lot of shimmer in it and you're not shaking it, and then by the time you get down to the bottom, there's going to be a lot of buildup of the um, the glitter. Plus, depending on where the actual, what's that bit called? You know, the like little pipe that goes down to the bottom. If you're not shaking it, you're going to get a lot of buildup of the, the glitter. So if there's like illuminating properties in it and you need to shake it to like you know mix it well if that's just sitting down the bottom and you are not shaking it you're just going to get like splotches of sheen <laughs> coming out on your body yeah I don't like this um yeah their brush sets are quite good for the price I don't need more face palettes I get a bit, bit addicted to trying blush palettes and I have to stop. I just brought cream blushes. I am the same as you, Carolyn. I get addicted to trying blushes as well, even though they're one of the things that take the most amount of time to get through in your collection. Um, must have glitter in it. No, I don't think so. I don't want to look like tea. Yeah. I don't want to look like I've got tea stains on my body either. <laughs> That's a weird one. I don't know. And it's by Terry as well, so it's going to be hella expensive. You'll be dropping them dollars to pay for that product. Alrighty, there's a few things in here that we need to talk about. Where are they? All right, this is the first one. So I've just jumped on over to Trend Mood. And the first one that we need to talk about is the Maybelline The Lifter Gloss with Hyaluronic Acid. These remind me so much of KKW Beauty. I don't know whether you guys see that as well, but with this like baby millennial pink color, reminds me so much of KKW. So these are a plumping gloss. Comes in... 10 shades. Uh, it's supposed to be a formula that's visibly smooths the lip surface, enhances lip contour with high shine with an extra large wand for a one swipe applicator application. So they're kind of copying a little bit of the Fenty Beauty lip gloss vibes with the applicator. But yeah, this screams, this screams KKW to me. Um... Yes, it does look like KKW, the same shape and color as KKW. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that it was very, very similar to the glosses that she already has in her collection. So, yeah. wonder whether – I wonder whether um, KKW is going to take further action <laughs> – um, those look so pretty. I don't buy from Maybelline anymore if I can help it. That is fair enough. They don't look too bad, but, uh, they, are they, plump? they are supposed to be plumping, aren't they? It would just depend on like whether they are that super minty formula for me. Like if they're that really burny lip formula, I wouldn't like them, but the colors look really nice. I think that for Maybelline, the color range is pretty good. Okay, these caught my eye. 
this is probably one of the only things that have caught my eye this week i have the hiccups these are two new eyeshadow palettes from ysl i don't know what about these i don't know what it is but <laughs> these are gorgeous they are going to be hella expensive but wait till you see the swatches if the packaging the packaging on this is beautiful it looks like a ysl luxury bag the swatches on at these palettes like i was kind of shocked by how good these palettes look swatched they look really really pretty really really pretty i don't need them i definitely don't need them i've never tried any eyeshadows actually from ysl but i can imagine that these are probably like charlotte tilbury prices in australia or pat mcgrath prices in australia um but i think that they're really well done especially for the fact that they are ysl um i don't know normally i don't associate a brand like ysl with something as colorful as this um whoa that is colorful for ysl yeah as soon as i saw it i was like oh hello ysl uh, Maybelline isn't even cheap in Australia anymore unless Priceline are having sales. I 100% agree with you. I think a lot of the brands like Maybelline, Revlon, um, what's that other one? Rimmel, like those main like big tier um, like drugstore brands in Australia, they are not cheap. <laughs> they are not cheap in Australia. Um, yellow puts me off. Me go back to the swatches. I actually don't mind it <laughs> when you see it with the rest of the colors. I don't mind the yellow, like it's kind of out of place when you see the rest of the color story, but I don't mind it. I don't mind either, like either of these palettes. I think they both look beautiful. I think YSL, if they continue along this path, I think that they might be able to rake in like a new audience. Um, Carolyn says, Not my colors. But yeah, like I said, I think if they continue to do palettes like this or something like a little bit more adventurous for YSL, I think that they might be able to rake in a new audience for a young, not a younger audience, but, you know, get that new audience that has the money coming through. Okay. This is something that also interested me. <laughs> this is nothing new, but it is a new, um, it's a kit from... Charlotte Tilbury. I created a beautiful new bundle. Um, so this must be a trend mood kit, like a kit that trend moods done with Charlotte Tilbury. But it's the Pillow Talk Superstar Lip and Cheek Kit. It is retailing for $86.40, but it has a value of $96. So not the best savings, but, you know, for, with Charlotte Tilbury, you've got to take all that you can get. In this, it includes the Cheek to Chic blush. So you can choose either between the Pillow Talk Intense or the original. We've got the Superstar lips in Pillow Talk and also the Lip Cheat, lip cheat in Pillow Talk Medium. So it's a good little set um, here. I think it's a really good set. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. I'm very tempted, but I'm not going to buy it at the moment. But it's got three of Charlotte Tilbury's like cult products in it. So if you wanted to save a little bit of money, Trend Mood also has a coupon code as well if you wanted to add that to it. This is a new hair product from Briogeo. This is the Be Gentle, Be Kind Avocado and Kiwi Mega Moisture Superfood Mask. So... This is supposed to be a protein-free nourishing hair mask formulated with highly emollient ingredients to boost moisture for softer, more manageable hair. It's supposed to hydrate dry, parched hair, provide softer, smoother, and more manageable hair after two uses, restores, and locks in moisture. So it has avocado, kiwi, and spinach in it. Cool. Sounds nice, but I think it might be a little bit too, I don't know, too heavy for my hair. My hair's quite short and very frizzy, as you can see. <laughs> um, so any products that weigh it down, make it look really greasy. Um, 
because I have the shorter hair. So I'm not quite sure. I would definitely wait to see reviews on this before I even thought about it. But I have been tempted to try some of the Briogeo products because I know a lot of people rave about the Briogeo products. So, yeah. Um. Oh, Irene is here. Hello. Um, I like the colors that pop. I love every other color. I'm still thinking about the Urban Decay Violet Palette and the Sigma Corda Rosa. Um, so about 130, 140 in Australian dollars. I do like those products. I have Pillow Talk Original Lipstick and Liner. That's a very, whoop, that mask sounds very nice. That's not too bad. Like $130, $140 for three products is not too bad, especially in Australian dollars. So we have some new products from Charlotte Tilbury. We have some new shades in the Matte Revolution lipstick. So we have Wedding Bells, Mrs. Kisses, and First Dance. These are actually quite nice colors. I will say this is part of her like bridal collection. I think these are really good, like nude bridal colors. They're really nice. This one at the top here. She's pretty. I like how Charlotte Tilbury has the little um, kiss lips imprinted in the tube. I just think that's a really nice little touch. This is a new product from Maybelline, and this is a little bit weird, a little bit weird. This is a overnight eyelash conditioner for supple lashes, soft eyelashes. Supple lashes, soft eyelashes. Is that what it's called? Mm, supple lashes, soft, okay. This is infused with Pro Kera Complex, Sheer Butter, and Argan Oil. This is a lash mask that gives you healthier looking lashes in three uses. So you're supposed to apply this before bed, wear it overnight, and then wash it off in the morning. So I'm my main concern with this product is like if you get this in your eyes, it's gonna burn like a mofo because just the fact that they specify that um, they specify that you have to wash it off. And I don't know. I don't know about these sheer butters, argan oil, whether that's really going to do anything for your lashes either. I don't know. I think it's just a gimmick. It's really just a gimmick. And this weird, like, fluffy applicator thing. Yeah, I don't like this product. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, it's supposed to be $6.99, so it's going to be, like, fairly reasonably priced in Australia. I don't know whether I believe that it's going to do anything. It says in three uses. Maybe I'll get this and use it three times and see if it actually does anything. Gives you healthier-looking lashes. I really don't think I believe that. <laughs> especially coming from Maybelline. So, yeah, maybe I might check that out when it comes to Australia and just test it just for shits and giggles because, you know, I want to prove them wrong. I just wanted to talk about – actually, no, this is not the one I wanted to talk about. Maybe this is the one I wanted to talk about. Anyway, Char um, not Charlotte Tilbury, Pat McGrath um, – if you are interested in getting any of her palettes, I know we were talking about um, this last week or the week before, and we were getting very confused. One photo, the packaging looked pink. The other photo, the packaging looked black. Turns out that Pat McGrath on her website has some of her palettes in the limited edition pink packaging, but you can only buy it through her website. Um, I don't think she's going to have the pink packaging at any of her stockers. So if you wanted any of her palettes in that pink packaging, you go buy it through the website. So what I'm trying to say is we're not crazy. <laughs> I know we were all talking about some photos that looked pink, some photos that looked black. Um, that's because there are two palettes. There are two palettes with one's black, one's pink. There's 
the same palette you can get in black and pink. You've just got to go to the hassle of getting the limited edition pink packaging. I'm assuming it's already sold out though. Um, this one looks so pretty. I managed to get hold of the limited edition pink one on Friday night. Pat McGrath nearly had my money. It launched yesterday. The pink was limited edition. The new one in the limited edition has sold out. Damn it, because that was the one that I was looking at. I nearly, uh, I nearly brought it. I nearly brought it, but I didn't because I have like zero dollars at the moment. So I had to refrain myself. Um, I think it sold out in like two minutes. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. They have the first one in pink for sale still, I think. Yeah, I want that. I, I like the second one though. Out of all the, out of all the Pat McGrath palettes, it's been that, that second one that's really grabbed my eye. All right. I gotta remember what we got up to last week. Um, oh, here's some swatches of the Kaleidos palette. There's the swatches of the Kaleidos eyeshadow palette. And then here are the highlighters, the blushes. Some of these um, shimmers in the Kaleidos palette look really pretty. Next, we have some new products from MBA Cosmetics. This is their neon collection. These look bright. Holy moly. If these don't shine under a UV light, um, I will be very surprised. These two especially, they are hella bright. Holy moly. Um. The Kaleidos one, OMG, yeah, it's pretty. Um, I don't really like the packaging. I, I, I know I just said that, but the packaging gets me. <laughs> um, I want the first one, but I think I want them both. I can't even wear eyeshadow every day. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, these ones. They're bright. They're very bright. Neons are really hard to formulate, so I would be very interested to know if they nailed it with these because I know neons can be really difficult. Um, a lot of neons, they come up super patchy on the eyes, so I would be interested to know how they got on with that formula. We have a new... A new multi-chrome pigment from not 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 notius beauty this is part of their constellation collection this is really pretty look at that shift oh lord that's beautiful that is stunning where are these guys based i've never heard of this brand before never ever Oh, that one's pretty too. Oh, here we go. Here's the whole Constellation collection. Ooh. Oh, they're very pretty. Beautiful. Um, okay. Color me intrigued. I want to know where these guys are based. <laughs> So bad, am I being selfish if I say I want them to be based in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> ah, New York, damn it. <laughs> They're having a 25% off everything sale at the moment. Uh, so the multi-chromes are $10, $11, $11 pretty much, $10.60 each 
that's not too bad. You can get bundles. Okay, okay. Uh, are they pressed or are they loose? Um, please be pressed. I would like you to be pressed. Oh, they're loose. Damn it. <laughs> so these are loose pigments. Um, I don't know whether they're all loose. It looks like they might be. Damn. <laughs> I just don't use my loose pigments as much as I use my pressed ones. Oh, that one's pressed. They do have some pressed by the looks of it. Yeah, I just don't use my loose ones as much as I use my pressed ones. Um, that is stunning. Wow, I love that. It looks like iridescent mermaid. It definitely does, doesn't it? It's so pretty. Imagine that on your eyes. Oh, it'd be so glorious. Uh, not selfish at all. We miss out on so much. Uh, I feel the same when it's an Aussie product and I want it and have to pay an arm and a leg to get it to LA. <laughs> uh, too messy, yeah. Uh, I just ordered the Davina Exploders bundle yesterday. So much for the low buy on eyeshadows. I hear you there. Actually, I've been really good when it's come to when it's come to eyeshadows, everything else has just been insane. All right. Um, I'm going to skip over some of this stuff because <laughs> I'm not really interested, to be honest. <laughs> so I'm just going to jump up to this guy right here. This is from um, OMFG Cosmetics. This is the Sugar and Sweets palette. This is a very pastel palette. Um. I'm not, yeah, no. And then we have some more from this collection. We've got a couple of brushes. We have a glitter tower, some eyelashes. There's a little bit of everything in this collection. I just want to see if they have some swatches on the page. Here we go. The swatches turn me off even more. <laughs> they look kind of patchy. They look... Mm. yeah no they look patchy and pastels once again pastels like neons pastels can be hard to formulate as well get that color payoff and these guys are based in california by the looks of it so expensive to get shipped and exchange rate <laughs> It's all expensive at the moment. It's all too expensive. Okay, I lie. I'm going to go back and go back to the things that I skipped over. We have a new collection coming from Luxy Beauty. This is the Ice Cream Social Collection Part 2. So we have four colors here. They are um, duo chromes. They look beautiful as well. This one down the bottom is calling my name and this one. Uh, looks like it's already sold out. These are only $3 each. Like, Luxy with their prices is so good. Or you can get all four for $12. So you don't get any saving for buying them in, um, in the bundle. But, yeah, it's easier to add them all to your cart when it's in a bundle. That's for sure. Uh, love UBE. Yeah, that one's beautiful, that one. That was my fave. Uh, ex our exchange rate is terrible. I know at the moment it's just ridiculous. It's so bad. So, so bad. That's why as much as possible at the moment I'm trying to find Australian stockers because, you know, you don't have to calculate in that exchange rate and the shipping and all that jazz because it just – it's just cheaper at the moment for me to pay Australian shipping than trying to get it shipped from overseas and the wait time and the exchange rate. It's oh, it's so bad at the moment for us. 
Um, this is a new palette coming from Gemcast. I've never heard of this brand before. I've never seen anything from them at the moment or before. Uh, so, yeah. I would like to see swatches of this. Let's see if they have swatches on the Instagram. Um, oh, okay. So... No swatches. They got some cool looking stuff on the website if you are like into that more gothic, witchy kind of vibe. Cool. They look like a pretty cool brand. No swatches of the palette as yet though, which is annoying. Very annoying. Um, feel free to share all Australian stockists. I will try and share as much as I can. Um and if I like, if I'm buying anything from any sites in Australia, I always mention them in my monthly haul. So I always tell you guys where I purchased the products from in those hauls. And let me just make sure that nothing has been announced while we have been chatting. Because that always happens. Okay, nothing. We're off the hook today. We're off the hook. Stop sharing my screen. Yes, yeah, so Stevie, I always try it as much as possible. I always mention in my um, in my monthly hauls where I purchase things from. So I think that's probably going to be about it. I don't mean to like, you know, rush things along today, but <laughs> I do have to do a few things today and I'm very time poor at the moment. I have assignments to do, so. <laughs> I'm trying to um, um, I'm trying to find some while everything is going on. Tarte orders are getting held up. It's hard with brands like the bigger brands like Tarte um, and like Fenty and different brands like that. It's hard to find Australian stockists because generally those ones are exclusive to brands like Sephora or Mecca. Um, it's more like the smaller ones that or brands that have no loyalties <laughs> that you can find at other smaller stockers. My suggestion is if you are looking for something available in Australia or like a particular brand in Australia, just search that brand in Google and then type like Australia after it or Australian stockers after it. And nine times out of 10, um, like something will pop up. Just be a little bit careful, like check the reviews and maybe do a Google of reviews of that particular stockist to see if they're any good or if they have any bad reviews. But that's generally how I find Australian stockists. Like I will just type in the brand that I want and the word Australia or Australian stockers after it. Um, it's, that's how I find it. Um, I'm trying to find somewhere everything is going on. Tart orders are getting held up. Try to get tart from Sephora. I just mean I'm trying to find different Aussie ones so I stop buying tart ones. <laughs> um, what's a couple of brands that are, well, a couple of sites that I buy from. Uh, Adore Beauty has a lot of different um, tart at Sephora. isn't as easy as, easy as direct I've found. Um, Adore Beauty, Glam Raider are both reputable stockers for a lot of brands. Yeah, so Adore Beauty is fantastic and you get a Tim Tam with every order. Um, Glam Raider is really good. Glam Raider is pretty quick shipping. Um, recently, I discovered Budazzled Beauty. They have brands like Danessa Myricks, um, Ofra, and a few other brands, and their shipping is super quick. Um, what else? Where else do I buy from? Priceline, I get some things from Priceline. Um, I'm trying to think of other brands, other places that I buy from. I can't quite think right now. There is a video on my channel of some websites that I, uh, oh yeah, Berserk as well. They're pretty good. I don't think I've ever actually brought from Berserk, but I've always heard pretty good things about like their customer service and, and stuff. Um, what else, where else do I buy from? You've put me on the spot. Now I can't think of any. Yeah, there's a there's a video on my on my channel of some online Australian stockers that I recommend. I probably should do an updated one on that because that's quite an old video, but I still do buy from a lot of those 
um, brands. Oh yeah, Discount Beauty Boutique. I buy from them um, every now and then. I used to buy from them a lot, um, but not so much anymore. I brought direct from Eri Perez. I haven't tried anything from that brand, but I did see that they're now stocked at Mecca as well. Um, I can't remember what other brands I rec uh, what other sites I recommended, but yeah, they're the main ones I think that I probably buy from. I buy a lot from Adore Beauty and. Um, Uh, it's okay. I'll keep looking. Just trying to find small businesses to support. I buy from Discount Beauty Boutique. Yeah, I'm the same, Stevie. So that's why I always, like I said, try and mention if I have brought anything in my a monthly haul from a new site or from somewhere. I always try and recommend, like I always try and say where I've made that order from so you guys know um, where I'm getting it from. And I always, like, I generally will say I brought from this site and, um, they're an Australian site. Like I'll usually point out in those haul videos um, which sites are Australian and whatnot. Are they cheaper on their own site with your first order? Oh, okay. That's that's handy to know. Um, what was I going to say? I think that's about it. I think that's it. I can't really think of any more. Like I said, my brain <laughs> today is, is fried. But, yeah, I might have a look. I'll have a look at what I've got and where I buy from. And I might do like a little updated list of like online retailers that I recommend for Australian people uh, sometime in the future because there's there's a few that I've added to my list since I did that last video. Uh, oh yeah, Kylie's professional makeup, mineral makeup from the Gold Coast. There's also brands like um, like Kryolan. You can buy directly from Kryolan and you can also um, Crown Brush. Um, there's a couple of different like makeup type brands. Uh, there's Makeup and Glow. They stock a lot of like makeup artist brands, but you can buy from them just as a consumer. And yeah, I definitely need to, I'm, I mean, I need to write all this down and do a video because you guys are mentioning some good, good websites as well. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I am supposed to do, um, I'm actually going down to the Gold Coast this week for assessments. Um, I'm very stressed. I don't want to go because, you know, <laughs> coronavirus, um, but I have to go, so I'm going. I'm, I'm very stressed about all that as well as assessments, but I'll be fine. I'm just going to Airbnb class back home to Airbnb. Um, that would be handy. I feel like all the regular American ones get lots of recognition, but the smaller ones get forgotten, so I'm trying to find smaller ones to support to keep them going. That's such a good good way to think of it, um, Stevie, and especially like trying to support Australian people. It means that you are like keeping Aussies employed as well. Um, yeah, so I think I have like 10 assessments left to do and I am frantically trying to like pump out <laughs> assessments and face charts and yeah, all that jazz trying to do everything at once. Anyway, so that all being said, <laughs> I think I'm going to jump off now. Um, if you are still here and you haven't already, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Um, and if you are new here and you haven't as well, you can subscribe. That way you get notified when I go live every single week. You YouTube will send you a little notification. Um, if you have anyone that you think would enjoy my channel, share it with them, <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, thank you, everyone, for the well wishes. I will get through my assignments. <laughs> I will let you know how I go next week in my live stream. Um, same Stevie. I brought quite a bit from Amanda Ramsey Makeup to help support her in her business. Um, cool, 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 cool. Alrighty. 
Thank you everyone for joining me again this week. It has been a pleasure having you all here. It's been so good to see you all again and talk to you all. I hope you all have a amazing week. I hope you all look after yourself, stay safe, stay healthy, stay away from everyone else because they won't stay away from you. <laughs> um, and I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll see you next Sunday, same time, same place. And yeah, catch us all later. Bye.